I'm a playwright, director, and filmmaker. I'm Youngjin Lee. I'm an associate professor in Stanford's theater and performance studies department. Just growing up with immigrant Asian parents, it um, it was never really uh, it never really occurred to me that it was possible for me to be an artist. You know that that um, that was not a path that was ever presented as anything realistic in any way, and so. Um, I think the closest I could get to that was becoming a Shakespeare professor, which is what I spent um, most of my uh, adult life pursuing. And it didn't really occur to me until, you know, late into my 30s that, uh, that I could be an artist at all. I went to UC Berkeley for my undergrad and I um, was an English major. Um, I took a lot of classes uh, having to do with Shakespeare and early modern literature, which um, eventually became my specialty in grad school. Oh, I I loved Shakespeare right away. You know, I remember reading Shakespeare in high school and really responding to his work. You know, he's seen as this very sort of stodgy, canonical, traditional playwright. You know, there's very much of a sense of like, we're being very fancy and traditional right now. But Shakespeare was not in his day that, you know, that type of writer. You know, like for King Lear in particular, it was based on this um, very well-made play um, called King Lear that, um, that is, is now anonymous. We don't know who wrote it, but it was very successful in its day. And Shakespeare, um, rewrote this play and just exploded it and turned it into this, you know, completely crazy theatrical experience. His writing was wild. Um, I went, uh, straight through to grad school from undergrad. I went through all the stages. I passed my orals. I advanced to candidacy and, um, and I was working on my dissertation, which was on King Lear, and um, I was just, you know, really unhappy. And I went to see a therapist. She said, you know, I'm just going to ask you a question and I want you to answer it off the top of your head. She asked me, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, I want to be a playwright. That thought had never really occurred to me before, that that was something that I could do um, with my life professionally. And um, and so it took, uh, it took a quite a bit more therapy to sort of get me to take that seriously as an idea. But um, eventually I left school and I moved to New York and I started working in theater. You know, right now, the thing that I'm really interested in with respect to theater is the question of class. One of the things that I love the most about theater is that it's not like film where you have to have, you know, equipment and you have to buy things. You know, with theater, you really can just have people in a room um, and bring an audience and, you know, and do a play anywhere. And so I love the sort of egalitarian nature of that. Um, But weirdly, you know, in the U.S., uh, tickets to live theater tend to be quite expensive, and um, which means that the audiences for theater tend to be limited to people who can afford expensive theater tickets. I also think it's sort of a problem that um, the people making theater tend to be from middle to upper class backgrounds, people who went through, you know, MFA programs, you know, just a very specific uh, type of people who who get admitted into this world of professional theater. And I think we need to open it up a little bit more. I mean, one of the things I find exciting about theater is it's finally starting to diversify. You know, there's more women, more people of color, more voices being included. And I think that, um, uh, you know, theater needs to diversify in terms of class as well. And one of the things that really fascinates me about trying to write a play that deals with class right now is that um, we as Americans don't really have a vocabulary for talking about class. You know, most Americans don't know what class they are. They don't know what it means to be rich, what it means to be poor, what it means to be middle class. They don't really know what the word class means. And so you can try to make a play about class and the audience will not even be able to see it because they don't know what it is. So the question of, you know, how do you make class visible to an audience and legible to them and sort of, you know, teach them a vocabulary with which to engage with the subject of class? Um, How do you do that, you know, while also, you know, telling a story? You know, that's sort of a question that's really interesting to me right now.